people around the league are feeling right now. That is the shot of LeBron James. Uh, after the Lakers game in Philadelphia last night, they stayed in the Philadelphia area. They flew back uh, this morning, and they learned of the news while they were on their way back to L.A. As ESPN reported in Los Angeles reported earlier, uh, the entire plane was just devastated by the news, as you might expect them to be. And there is LeBron less than 12 hours after he passed Kobe Bryant for third on the NBA's all-time scoring list in his second season with the Lakers before he gets back to L.A., one of his mentors passes away in a plane, excuse me, a helicopter crash in the Calabasas area. Speaking of that crash, we have an update right now of the death of Kobe Bryant and also the reaction we are seeing from people to that death. Um, how are you summing this together when you're talking to people well, <clears throat> you just realized that we, we lost some very, somebody very, very special. And I think that um, somebody said earlier that anybody associated with the NBA community, I think it was Coach Alvin Gentry at the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, he said anybody associated with the NBA community is incredibly devastated by the loss of Kobe Bryant. Um, he's a five-time champion. We know all of those things. We know he was a winner. Uh, we know his, dedica his dedication and his commitment to excellence. But, you know, there was life beyond basketball, and it wasn't just about him winning an Academy Award. It wasn't just about him doing detail for ESPN Plus or a plethora of other things uh, that he was working on. He was really highlighting for basketball players, for athletes, professional athletes everywhere and beyond that there is life after your initial um, aspiration has ultimately expired. You know, he wanted to be a basketball player all his life, wanted to be a superstar NBA player and a champion, and he achieved that. Well, what do you do from there, and how easy is it to make that transition? Well, Kobe Bryant was one of those folks that preached about being prepared to make that transition, preparing yourself ahead of time, understanding that it can't last forever, but if you go about the business of putting forth your due diligence and making sure uh, that you set new goals, new things to aspire for and to pursue and ultimately to achieve. Life can be just as fulfilling beyond those days of playing than you ever imagined. And it was something that he talked about on numerous occasions with athletes. So if you look at a LeBron James, the Dwayne Wades of the world and others, and look at how they've evolved from being just professional athletes to being so much more than that, particularly in the business community, ask them about their relationship with Kobe Bryant. Ask them about the wisdom that he imparted upon them. Ask them about when they all went to Beijing for the 2008 uh, eight Olympics and what have you, and the kind of things that he talked to them about. And he religiously talked to them about and how it served as an inspiration for them to go and extend that level of wisdom and knowledge to other people. This was who Kobe Bryant was. It was who he aspired to be. He wanted to motivate. He wanted to inspire. He wanted to make a difference far beyond the basketball court while still reminding you that when it was his time, he did all he could to never cheat himself, never cheat the Lakers organization, never cheat the game of basketball, never cheat anybody from getting exactly what they expected from him an all-out effort in pursuit of a level of excellence achieved by very, very few people on the planet Earth. It was who he was, it was who he wanted to be, and it was who I knew him to be, not just as a reporter that covered him, but ultimately, once he retired, somebody uh, that I considered a genuine friend who was clearly a friend to me. And um, it's devastating that he's gone, and uh, we're all hurting right now. I just got off the phone with Shaq. Shaq was crying, and couple of other people were just incredibly hurt uh, by what's transpired. I know I've shed some tears. I know Jalen and others, Jay Williams and others have shed the tears as well. It's, it's devastating. You know, That's Steve, the best way I can put it. Steve, I spent 10 years in Los Angeles covering uh, the Lakers and so many of the teams there in L.A. And the thing about Kobe Bryant <laughs> that stood out to me, when you're in Hollywood, there are some big stars that go out, and not everybody is an A-list star. You have Jack Nicholson sitting courtside. Those are big stars. But every time Kobe Bryant walked into a room or even walked into Staples Center, he was the biggest star there because even the biggest celebrities wanted to talk to Kobe Bryant. He was the guy that everyone was looking to, to be near, to talk to, to get a little piece of something as they walked away from him. For those watching right now who don't know necessarily the entire athletic career of Kobe Bryant and what it means to the game of basketball, put into perspective, uh, if you would, Stephen A., in only the way that you can, how big of a star Kobe Bryant was. 
Well, he was definitely a mega star. I mean, obviously there's Michael Jordan and then you look at others and Kobe Bryant was right there um, in terms of his cachet, uh, what he meant, his signature, what he was all about, the Mamba mentality and what have you. But you got to go back, take into consideration he's at Lower Marion High School. He's at Lower Marion High School and he's all American. He comes straight to the pros. He's telling you he's going to be as great as Michael Jordan. And then even the great Michael Jordan, when he retired, he all the names that you would bring up, he said, that guy right there, Kobe Bryant, is the guy that I look at when it comes to challenging me because of the mentality uh, that Kobe Bryant had had. And then again, you take it beyond the court of play. As I talked to you about it earlier, you know, I'm hosting a show, quite frankly, on ESPN two years ago, and everybody's talking about, go ahead, do this, do those interviews, do that. You're going to be the next Oprah. And Kobe Bryant comes onto the show. He said, love Oprah, but forget all of that. It ain't about Oprah. It's Harpo. He was talking about what she owned, not what she was in front of the camera. And those are the kind of things that he constantly reminds you of when you thought your aspirations were enough, when you thought they were lofty enough to pursue. And that was it. He was always reminding you that there was so much more to achieve. And that was what was so special about him. Stephen A., as always, appreciate the perspective on the life and legacy of Kobe Bryant dead at the age of 41. You know, there aren't too many people that are inextricably linked with Michael Jordan and LeBron James, but Kobe Bryant is one of those. Unders there in the Calabasas area uh, regarding the helicopter crash that Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna were on board. During that press conference, they would not confirm any of the identities of the people on board that helicopter, although multiple outlets, including ESPN, have confirmed that Kobe Bryant was indeed on board that helicopter with his 13-year-old Gianna. Initially, we were told, Zubin, that there were five people on board, but according to officials there, there were nine bodies involved in that crash. Again, more information coming out. We will continue to follow it throughout the evening here on the ABC and Disney Family of Networks. Indeed. So Kobe was a father, a husband, an NBA legend, and Academy Award winner, and he was also an icon, and he's gone too soon. We're joined by Jalen Rose, ESPN NBA analyst, and Jalen, every single guest we've had on, from Spike Lee to Gary Payton, people that admired him, people that played with him, we all ask them the very same first question. What's your reaction? This is a, a devastating day for humanity, and I know Kobe Bryant was one of the top basketball players of all time. But he was educated. He was a gentleman who spoke multiple language, multiple languages. He was a father. He was a husband. He was really disciplined and hardworking. He was a guy that had perseverance. Somebody that I got a chance to meet when he first entered the NBA. I was living in Los Angeles, getting a chance to be in the gym with him at UCLA earlier in his career. I lived in downtown Los Angeles for a long period of time, basically had a place in Los Angeles his entire career. And uh, playing against him in the 2000 NBA Finals, watching him get his first NBA championship, then covering him as a me member of the media basically for the last 20 years. He was always gracious and respectful. He was always uh, the smartest guy in the room and the hardest working guy in the room. and. Uh, it, it, it graduated to later in his career. We know about the historic 81 point performance and it, it, it uniquely now positions me to feel like I'm honored to have not only been a chance, been a, having the opportunity to take the floor with him at any point of his career, but for one of his more notable moments. Um, being at appearances with Kobe, I got a chance to speak at his basketball camp. He was someone that supported the high school I founded and gifted us gym shoes. Um, he, he was really diligent about the things that he believed in. He was um, an industry tastemaker. And we're really going to miss Kobe, not only, again, as an example of a basketball player, but as somebody that uh, gave so much to humanity and has gone way too soon. I want to ask you a question for those that are watching on ABC that may be familiar with Kobe Bryant and his exploits, but maybe don't know him the way some of our viewers on ESPN, the avid sports fans do. Throughout the afternoon, every guest has come on and said it was all about embodying the Mamba mentality. For those that don't know the Mamba, Kobe's nickname. Can you help put into perspective from Jerry Colangelo down to Gary Payton, owners to players, everybody experiencing and admiring 
the Mamba mentality. What did that mean for this once in a lifetime athlete? It was an all around exhaustion to prove to himself and the rest of the world that he could be the greatest of all time. And it was something that he talked about earlier in his career. And when you start saying right out of high school that you're gonna be better than Michael Jordan, you're gonna get a lot of kikis and a lot of Snickers.